were five things allocated to man when God created man. And so when we talk about the fall, it is the lack of those five things that we call the fall. We consider the fall. Man's depravity or inability to access those five things that were made available for, to him is what we call the fall. And so it's important to know the five things allocated to man before the fall of man. And the first thing the Bible outlined was in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. The Bible said, let us make man, that's God speaking, in our own image. So the first thing God gave to man was his image. Genesis 1 26. Let us make man in our own image. And I told you the image of God is not um, what you think it is. For example, if I say what is the image of man, you can go as far as telling me he has two eyes, two ears and two nose. That's not what the image of God is. The image of God is actually the glory of God. And so in Hebrews chapter 1 from verse 1 to 3, it says God who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophet has in this last day spoken unto us by his son who being the brightness of his glory the express image of his person so the glory of God is the image of God and the glory of God is the full weight of God's essence so when God created man he gave himself to man as a token so man's asset in the garden were not the fruits they were not the things surrounding him. That's why the Bible said, the value of man is not in the multitude of his possession. Man's true asset were not the things that he had at his disposal. Man's true asset was the glory of God that he had. And the moment man lost that, there was a vacuum in his spirit that could not be satisfied. If you will find value in anything apart from God, it means you, are, you still have not retained the glory of God. Because the value of man was not in the things he had. It was the fact that he carried the fullness of God the fullness of God tabernacled in him and if you look at Jesus who is the first first full man or the first man who walked in the stature of a man in Colossians chapter 1 verse 9 the Bible said it pleased the father that the fullness of the Godhead should dwell in him Colossians 2 9 the fullness of the Godhead should dwell in him so Jesus never ascribed, ascribed value in anything around him he ascribed value to what was on his inside so he said, until now I walk. He said, the father that is in me, do it the walk. So everything about Jesus was what he carried. But when man fell, he lost the glory. Number two thing that God gave to man is still in Genesis 1, 26. He said, let us make man in our own image after our likeness. The word likeness there speaks of the character of God. So it was natural for the man to live out the character of God. The man knew not sin. The man had power to live righteously. The reason is because the character of God was instituted, was, was, was downloaded into him. So everything the man did was according to the dictates of God's nature. He didn't do anything that was contrary to God because he had the character of God. It was natural for the man to do the will of God. When we say man is falling, it's because he no longer sustains the capacity to express the character of God. And Jesus told us in John chapter 8 verse 44, when he was speaking to the Pharisees who religiously tried to meet up God's standard, he said, you are of your father, the devil, the lost of your father, Shayedu. The reason is because when God created the man, the man could live out the character of God. His nature was the nature of love. But now that he's fallen, he's driven by lust. So when Jesus saw these people, even though they were highly religious, he told them, you live by the power of lust. The character of God is not what powers you. It is lust that powers you. And if you study 1 John chapter 2 from verse 15, the Bible says, love not the world. He said, they that love the world, the love of the Father is not in them. That means they've lost that character. They've lost that, that, that character of the Spirit. He said, the love of the Father is not in them. He said, what is in the world? He said, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. So when you see people today who are still at that falling state, you'll find them living by lust. They are driven by what they see. They are driven by what they hear. They are driven by what they feel. They, they operate at the level of their feelings, sensual realm. But when a man is restored to glory, he, he, he develops the ability by the spirit to live above how he feels. Taught in the man lost. It's in Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. He said, let them have dominion over the birds of the earth, the fish in the water and everything that creepeth upon the face of the earth so the man could exercise the authority of God the authority the man had was not a function of how well they could shout the authority the man had 
had was not a function of how inventive and creative he was. He could literally wield the authority of the Father. So when the man speaks, is the seal of the Father that is put on his word. When the man gives a commandment, even the animals knew that God was talking. So when that man talks, you don't hear the voice of the man. You hear the voice of God. When the man gives a command, you hear the commandments of God because he was living by the authority of the Father. If you study this thing critically, you discover man was not created to live his life. He was created to live God's life. That's why he was created in God's class. So he carried God's image, he lived God's character, and he exercised God's authority. When you find people today who need somebody else's authority in order to do something, they've not found who they are in Christ. Because when we fell, we fell from the right to exercise God's authority. And so if you study John chapter 1 from verse 11, he said he came into the world, although the world was made by him, he said the world knew him not. He said he came unto his own, and his own received him not. He said, but as many as received him, to them he gave the authority to become the sons of God. So when a man, the man fell, he fell from authority. When the man was born of God, he was restored to authority. Now, on the strength of this authority, man doesn't need to beg to get things done. You know, many people don't understand this. So when they come to God, they are begging God for things. You were not, um, can, let me say it. If you, don't, if you don't believe it, go and study it. We don't beg God. Because in our right as sons, God shared his authority with us. So whatever you need, you command it to be. That's how you were created. God has already told you to deal with the mountain because the authority that he would have used, he has given to you already. So when we turn to God, we are coming for intimacy. We are coming to know him. We are coming to love him. We are not coming to ask God to do what he has already given us the authority to do. It's a sign that we lack understanding. Are we together? So what man lost was authority. And in Christ Jesus, authority was restored to man. The fourth thing man lost is in Genesis chapter 2 verse 16 and 17 and it's also in Genesis chapter 3 verse 8. The Bible said in Genesis chapter 3 verse 8 that in the cool of the day, the voice of God came walking in the garden. So man lost God's presence. He had access to God's presence. He lived in God's presence. God didn't design the man to live in the house. God actually designed for the man to live in his presence because the tangible presence of God can become a covering for the man. That's why in Psalm 91 verse 1, he said, blessed is the man that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. He said he will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So man's asset in the garden was actually the presence of God. He lives in the presence of God. And when you live in the presence of God, you become a ruler in the face of the earth. When the presence of God tabernacles over a man, he becomes a terror to his enemy. So he's not trying to be careful to survive. He's actually a terror to his enemy. This is what God gave man in the garden. That he will be a ruler in the visible realm. So when God put man in his presence, he gave man everything that surrounds his realm. So man had access to everything. But on the fall, he lost it. He became depraved of the presence of God. And number five, the 15 man lost, which he never actually had because he never took advantage of, was the life of God. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 9, the Bible said God planted trees in the garden. And in that garden, in the midst of the garden, he planted also the tree of life. The man was expected to eat the tree of life so that he will walk forever in immortality. But he failed to eat of the tree of life. He rather chose to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You see that? This is why when Jesus came, he came to give you eternal life. He said, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. He said, but for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Why is that so? Because man never took advantage of life. So what is the fall? The fall is the depravity of the allocated divine resources for man on account of his rebellion. The fall is the depravity that man suffered on account of his rebellion. When he suffered that depravity, he lacked access to authority, he lacked access to life, he lacked access to the presence, he lacked access to the glory of God, and he lacked the ability to walk the character of God's spirit. So in Jesus, what God came to restore in Jesus is not a religion. What God came to restore in Jesus is a tribe, a species of people that carry God's glory, 
that have the ability to walk God's righteousness, that have God's presence, exercises God's authority, and live by God's life. That is what Jesus came to do.